All right. Hello, everyone. So the banner for these characters have dropped quite a few days already. I have I was going on a trip, so now I'm back, and I'm going to just quickly talk about these characters as well as the time moratorium status. So the big thing about these characters, right, is that their clashing power is very, very good because their defenses will give them borrowed time, and it gives them three borrowed time and four borrowed time, respectively. If we go to Dawn, she gets four. And since the calculation for the Clash Power Up and Haste is based on borrowed time count minus one, having four here and having three here will give you quite a significant amount of uh, Clash Power. So these characters are very, very good at clashing when they are in borrowed time, okay? So another interesting thing they have is that when they use their defense skill here, whenever they are hit by an enemy, they will inflict two tremor potency onto the target next turn, six times per turn. Uh, Dawn is also going to be the same, but she inflicts three tremor potency. And this is potentially huge because it goes up to six times. So three times six is going to be 18. And for Rodion, she is going to do a 12 tremor potency. And this is just the potential, right? Sometimes the enemy will not hit you as many times. If you do have aggro, you will not be able to get too, hit too many times. Rodion has no aggro skill, but Dawn does have an aggro skill here. So she can actually manipulate the enemies to hit her, and she can use a defense skill to go into borrow time after she uses skill 1. So, so Dawn will do something like skill 1, after that pop the defense, apply a bunch of tremor potency because she's getting hit and she has the aggro, and then after that, when the enemy has all this pot uh, tremor potency on, the en on them, she can use the skill 2 to consume the tremor potency and gain double the amount consumed as tremor count. So Dawn's flow is something like 1, defense, skill 2, and then skill 3. Something like that would be the correct order. There are some skips that you can do, of course. I'll talk about them later. But for now, that's pretty much what these characters have that is unique about them. And Tremor Gang generally has like two characters that can't really clash. Someone like Rose Phantom Assault, someone like LCCB Ishmael. These two characters aren't really very good clashers. So having good clashers to slot in if you are just a lazy person and you just want to keep win rating instead of manually controlling the potency guys, then yeah, this uh kind of these characters are pretty decent to just swap in. The bad news is that Rodion is not very necessary for this kind of team. If you especially if you're going for tremor, because tremor's main damage is the yellow tremor. Yellow tremor lets you tremor burst and then you deal 99 slot damage if you have 99 tremor potency. So potency is very important, but this Rodion does not have enough tremor potency of application to justify bringing her along instead of the other big potency appliers, right? Um, so this character is mostly right here to do binding and get additional clashing from her borrowed time state. Even if you look at the skills, right? The skills are rolling below average. 5, 10, 14. If you hit conditionals, you get to 16. Then you add the clash power from borrowed time and you'll be able to get a significant amount of clashing power. So yeah, that's really all she does, honestly. There's nothing really much else that she does that is very, very interesting besides time moratorium. But time moratorium, you don't want to stack them because if you stack them, you actually burst it immediately. And the way Time Moratorium works is that you want it to stay there so that you can build up the damage stored inside of it. And uh, when it ticks down, it will gain one stack and lose one count. And when you gain more stacks, you increase the damage output of the Time Moratorium. So you want to naturally let it blow up. You don't want to forcefully blow it up. So you don't really need two instances of Time Moratorium making Rodion a bit awkward. And if you remember, Rodion does have Rose Banner Rodion to fight with. So once again, like... Yeah, like there's too many conditions that exist currently that make this character just not interesting to run in a team comp. She doesn't have particularly higher clashing power or... Okay, she does have higher clashing power, but she doesn't have higher damage output. She doesn't have a lot of tremor potency application or count application. Neither does she have a significant amount of burst, only having one burst on the skill tree, while your Rose Banner Rodion is going to have at least two bursts, right? So the difference is just too big. And that's why I think that this character is not very useful to be slotted in. Uh, the passive also goes to show that she's a clash power unit, because when you clash against targets with moratorium, you gain clash power plus two, and you also take less damage from them. So this character is purely a clasher. She can take some hits as well with the golden time, healing her up to 60% of max HP, but Dawn can just do all of this stuff by herself also. So yeah, Rodion in my opinion is not a very useful unit, and Rose Banner Rodion is just a significantly better unit than this character. The thing you trade off is that Rose Banner Rodion sometimes cannot clash very well, so this character here would clash a lot better than her. But that is not enough to justify her, because you want to get potency application, and Rose Banner will do it. And if you want count, 
Rose Banner will also do it because Effervescent Corrosion is a very good ego for Rose, for Rodeon. Yeah. Right, so yeah, this class 2 unit not very interesting, but Dawn on the other hand is very interesting. She is very very good and I have seen some speed runs with her already where they do a two turn clear of some of the enemies in Refraction Railway 3, such as the uh, Bloody Gossipium. If you re-roll until you're able to get Dawn to go, I think, last or beef or after the person that applies the Tremor Potency, she will be able to apply Time Moratorium immediately. And if you do that, you will be able to start stacking the damage and then on the second turn, the enemy will explode and you actually one-shot the boss. It took quite a lot of rerolls though. Don't think it's very easy. It's like one hour's worth of rerolling in order to get the effect. But it is a pretty interesting way to just speedrun the fight. And since she can cheat it out by just having Tremor Potency on the target, she can be used in a reroll comp to just make sure you get the time moratorium effect. For example, you can do like LCCB Ishmael skill 2 into moratorium. You can do um, a Faust Wow Ego to get 10 Tremor on the target and then you'll be able to do time moratorium. Like all these options are available for you to get the time moratorium effect for a speed run. Besides that, Dawn also has a very amazing clash power. Like it's crazy how high she can roll. Because she has 11, 16, 16. That seems very lame, right? But remember she's getting borrowed time and she gets four of it. So that's additional clash power. And all the conditionals on these skills here is more clash power. So you get clash power for tremor on target. You get clash power for tremor on target. You get clash power for tremor on target. If target has a blind bind, gain clash power. And you also consume 10 tremor count on yourself to gain coin power plus two. So this skill here becomes a 5, 10, 15, 20, 24 on top of all of the other clash power that you get. Maybe making it like a 29 or 30 ish. I never did the math on that, but basically you have so much clash power, you could probably beat an other blossom moth in a 1v1. So, another good thing about her is that, once again, I told you, right, the skill 2, it is going to have a significant amount of Tremor Count gain, and that was one of the weaknesses of all the previous Tremor Count characters. But if you put the Euro Divi Vyoshu passive on this Dawn here, you actually can just cheat out your skill 3 immediately with one use of the skill 2, because Vyoshu's passive will trigger twice gain as well as another gain of the Tremor Count on yourself here, right? So you're gonna gain and then gain and then there will be a plus one plus one that gives you like 11 tremor count and that will be enough for you to get your skill tree immediately. So really, really strong character just cause you can get the effect immediately. And she also has one burst here as well as one burst here. It's not gonna be very good that she only has one burst. Like it's not gonna be as much damage as someone with two bursts or three bursts, but it's still going to be additional damage for the borrowed time stacking. So yeah, really, really good character to just throw into the tremor team. And she also has some adequate tremor application in my opinion because her skill 3 applies 5 tremor potency skill 2 applies 3 skill 1 applies 2 it's decent it's like a bit similar to rose spanner of assault but weaker by about maybe uh four tremor potency in total i think the skill 3 for rose spanner does uh does three more potency and the skill 2 does one more potency application or two more but yeah she's slightly weaker than rose spanner uh, assault but she applies so much Clash Power stuff. She just has so much um, clashing and coins as well as decent damage output that I think she's a worthwhile swap in. And remember that her defense also is an amazing 3 Tremor Potency 6 times per turn. So if you are able to manipulate the enemy aggro to get a lot of potency applied, that is a massive amount, even beating LCCB Ishmael skill 2. So this is a very, very strong character. Really, very, very strong for the Tremor team call, in my opinion. Sacrificing one turn for this amount of potency, I would totally do it if I'm just going for the yellow potency burst stuff. Like, this is very, very good stuff. And then, of course, the passive, if you drop below here, you will heal 80%. That is like a Keiko Ponglu passive, really, really good. And when you get out of borrowed time, you also gain aggro to one of these skills, uh, skill slots next turn. And that is good because that means that you can actually just go and use a defense skill again in order to go and do the shenanigans, right? Like, it's just super, super cool, this character, right? Really, really good stuff. The flow makes a lot of sense. She has a ridiculously high aggro, by the way. She's plus 8 aggro and like plus 7 aggro in total. So it is, it's just wow how much aggro she's getting. So she will probably be getting hit a lot. And that's why Golden Time is very good on her. And it's also why she is very, very thick. 242 HP with 49 defense level. That is like 10 stats. Really, really strong character in my opinion. Support passive, you will not use it because you will be using this character on the field. 
So that's pretty much what I think about the two characters. Dawn is very very good for the Tremor team comp and I will definitely slot her in. If we look at the setup for the team comp, right now Tremor actually has quite a few weird options like Uffi Heathcliff, right? Uh, and then we also have a lot of spare Tremor characters. We have like spare, um, we have like Molar Office Fixer, we have Rose Banner, Assault, we have Eurodivi. Like some of these characters can be swapped in and out depending on what you want. Uh, but all these characters here are all in some way or another have some Tremor shenanigans related to them. I guess that means Tremor can be quite flexible. You can swap in a lot of characters. But at the same time, the best team in my opinion is going to be Regret, obviously, because Regret is very strong. LCCB because it's very hard to find the amount of potency and count that she applies. Rose Banner Rodion because of Effervescent Corrosion Ego, as well as the character itself applying a lot of potency. And then Mola Otis because of Bursting. And then, of course, Euro DV because of Bursting. So one, two, three, four, five. The sixth slot is definitely going to be, in my opinion, the Teacock Dawn. Because I really like Teacock Dawn's ability to apply a crap ton of potency and have good clashing, I would replace Masot with her. And then for the rest of the Tremor gang, I may swap in a few of them depending on the scenario. For example, if you're using Ryoshio on the field, it's because you're trying to fight a boss with a lot of parts. So you break them, you get a lot of follow-ups from her, a lot of extra burst damage or you can use her to do a lot of ad clearing because if you are fighting ads, she will trigger her follow-up effect really really often, right? The follow-up effect is really really strong because if uh, because of the additional skill 1 against the staggered enemy and if they have the yellow uh, tremor on them, then you will deal a crap ton of damage based on the tremor potency they have on them. So yeah, Euro DV sometimes swapping in would make sense but putting her on the bench as a support passive for T Corp Dawn, for Regret for Mola Otis, all of these are just like options that make sense. So really the Tremor Team Com, I think is just going to be the core uh, three stars with one LCCB Ishmael because LCCB Ishmael is practically irreplaceable. And of course, if you need a dodge, because if you've noticed, right, this is a blocker, this is a blocker, this is a blocker, a blocker, a blocker, and this is also a blocker. If you need a dodge just to make your life easier, Mola Office Fixer is always available and she's one of the best characters in the game because her evasion skill is just ridiculous. It is a 10 base dodge. Like, that's, yeah, that's ridiculous, man. She's, she's, ah, she's so damn good. Yeah, she's so damn good. Right. So that's gonna be it for this summary of the Tremor Gang as of now. I really love it. Tremor Gang is has definitely been cooked quite a lot with the release of the Euro DVs and the release of the T Corpers. Uh, I think Dawn is just hmm, just a great addition to the T Corp Gang, and I can't wait to go and just run it down into the Refraction Railway just to see what kind of shenanigans I can get up to with the T Corp Dawn. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know. If you have additional information or your own theory crafting stuff, feel free to let me know. Ultimately, I think that the time moratorium mechanic is sometimes not necessary. And most of the time, just going to be a very funny number generator, pretty much. Yeah, like I've seen some hilariously high numbers, but like you don't need that much damage in Limbus Company. We don't have enemies with 20k HP or something like that. So yeah, this is ultimately just going to be a very fun way to just get a huge number, take a picture, then post it on ready to something, right? So that's gonna be it for this video guys. See you guys in the next video. I cannot wait for Heathcliff to drop. I have no clue what that guy is going to be. Uh, I, I, I sincerely hope he's not Tremor. I sincerely hope he just comes and fills up the sinking team cop here, which I have not fully like completed yet. So yeah, right now I just realized sinking is actually just like three characters plus butlers, right? Yeah, it's just this plus the butler eventually when I get it. And then after that it's Linton and then Heathcliff. So it's gonna be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, maybe not Dichi then. Then it's just like six. The two butlers, Linton, Dichi, Spice Bush, and Heathcliff. Maybe, maybe like that. I don't know. Right. Anyway, whatever. We'll find out when we find out. All right. That's it for this video, guys. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.